Hey, how's it going? I hope you are doing well. I hope things are uh, good in your life. And welcome to my channel. So this is going to be a relatively quick video today. I know I have been doing my normal amount of videos. Work life, my full-time job has gotten a little crazy. Uh, projects ramping up and getting really intense. And um, it's uh, sort of... Uh, thrown me for a little bit of an adjustment curve to adjust and figure out when I'm going to do videos and that kind of thing. But I should get back on track this next week. Probably have a couple videos for you on uh, calories and exercise and that kind of thing. So today really going to be just giving you a three month update. I know I gave a 12 week update um, in my last video. This is going to be a video about my 12 month post-op visit which didn't happen right at 12 weeks. And um, just kind of talk about what happened and what I experienced and my plans moving forward from this point. Um, first, a really quick update of where I am right now today. So on July 2nd, 2020, I weighed 310 and a half pounds. On July 16th, 2020, which was my surgery day, I weighed 300 pounds. And today, on October 25th, I weigh 240 pounds. So 60 pounds lost since surgery, and 70 and a half pounds lost uh, since July 2nd of this year. I am really happy with that, and very excited about my progress. And um, I went and bought a large shirt that fit for the first time in over 20 years it felt a little weird being in a section of the store and looking through clothes that felt like I shouldn't be able to buy it was a really strange feeling but I actually had to go pick up some new clothes for work because I went into our office and I hadn't been into our office for months and um, all of my extra, extra large clothes were looking kind of ridiculous. So I had to go do some shopping. And then I also spent the weekend purging a bunch of clothes, just piling them up for goodwill. And um, I'm going to go donate them. I've got a stack about four feet high of clothes that just look silly on me now. So... Um, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I couldn't be happier um, about it. And absolutely no regrets of getting the surgery so far. And um, looking forward to the next three months. So at my three-month visit, I met with my dietitian first. She asked me what I'd been eating during the day, uh, how my water intake was going, and, and that kind of thing. So as far as what I'm eating, um, I am primarily plant-based now. I've um, probably 90-95% plant-based. I still do eat some eggs and some meat here and there, but uh, for the most part I've gone mostly plant-based, and that is based on uh, a lot of research I've been doing into the microbiome, gut health, overall health. Uh, there are so many incredible studies that have come out over the last couple of years regarding um, plant-based diets and the microbiome and having um, a healthy metabolism, healthy mind, all of those things can be tied back to the gut. It is really, really amazing. It's sort of an emerging area of nutrition science that um, is really, really opening up a lot of information into uh, the benefits of feeding your gut microbiome properly. And I, I want to do a, a video specifically on that in the near future because I really want to share this information. It's it's really amazing. My dietitian was over the moon. She said she was really happy. It was music to her ears that I'm mostly plant-based. Uh, she does recommend a Mediterranean style diet which is primarily plant-based with some fish and oils and, and, and that kind of thing in there. Um, so she was really happy that I was going plant-based and it was so felt really good to get her support in what I'm doing and what I'm planning as far as diet goes. Um, 
After the dietitian, I met with the clinical nurse specialist and she checked my incisions. It's all good there. Um, asked me if I'd had any complications with diarrhea, constipation, um, vomiting, that kind of thing, which I've had none since uh, the second week of post-surgery. So the first couple of weeks post-surgery, I did have some diarrhea, constipation issues. That's completely resolved, so no issues since then. I haven't vomited once, so I haven't had any issues with that. A um, couple issues of acid reflux when I was laying down too soon after eating, but other than that, it's been not an issue. I'm not taking any of the uh, antacids anymore. I haven't had any issues, so I'm totally off of that. Uh, so things seem to be healing up very nicely. Um, she also ordered some blood work, and most of that came back uh, absolutely perfectly normal, just like the previous blood work I got. Uh, there's a couple areas we're watching, um, nothing major at all. I mean, my blood work is as good as it's been in 20 years, with no doubt in that area. So I'm feeling really good about that. Um, she did also mention that I was ahead of, uh, I was above average as far as weight loss based on uh, the excess amount of weight loss recommended for me based on BMI. I'm not a fan of BMI. I think it is a BS tool. I think it is uh, only used because insurance companies can disqualify people for life insurance now. Um, and they use it in health, the health insurance healthcare. I think most educated doctors know that it's complete BS. I think most educated people know that it's complete BS. And if you aren't familiar with why it's not <laughs> a good thing, so the BMI was invented <laughs> in the early 1800s by a mathematician, not a physician, no medical background at all. It was invented by a mathematician primarily focused on the male population in Belgium and their weight. How did they categorize weight? <laughs> and yes, it's almost 60% inaccurate on women and about 13% inaccurate for men. So women are really getting the short end of the stick here with a system that is wildly inaccurate and horribly misleading for health. Unfortunately, it's what we're stuck with. Um, as far as insurance companies goes, I, I really hope that changes because it is it's crap. Um, uh, there's a much better uh, uh, measurement out there called relative fat mass. You can still do this at home. It's an easy calculation. You can find cal cal calculators on online. Uh, it's, it's called again it's called relative fat mass you take a measurement amount around your waist it's calculated based on your height and it's actually been shown to be almost as accurate as the sort of gold standard DEXA body composition scans so uh, I, I did the RFI measurement it matched right up to both my body composition scale that I use here at home and the body composition test I got done at the bariatric clinic. It was right on point. So it was like a tenth or two off here or there. So uh, I, I really don't look at BMI, but I guess as far as averages go, um, at this point at three months, uh, the average is 30% of excess weight loss. I'm at 41%. That's great. I don't put a whole lot of stock in averages. What I've found in this is everyone's path is wildly different. There are slow losers. There are people that stall more often than other people. There's people that stall much longer than other people. There's people that drop a ton of weight in the first three weeks, stall for two or three weeks, then jump, then start losing slow. There's people that lose consistently through everything. There's just no average and there's no abnormal in this process. And that's why I really hate uh, when they bring up averages and things like that. But it's kind of the norm, right? It's what we expect. We compare ourselves to averages. Um, and uh, in some ways that's uh, unfortunate because it can get really 
frustrating when we aren't doing what we think we should be doing or losing what we should be losing because we think everyone else is losing that weight. So I really hope that we get rid of the BMI soon. I really do. I really do think it's an insurance company thing that they use to deny procedures. Uh, and I really think the life insurance industry is horrid for using it to deny people life insurance because their BMI is too high and it's complete and utter BS. So I went on a little tangent there. My apologies. So the last meeting I had on my three month visit was with my physical therapist and um, still had some back pain that I'm dealing with. He gave me some new exercises to do. He, he uh, theorized that it's probably for me working on my laptop from home. Uh, for my full-time job. I do have this computer set up here that is fairly ergonomic for me, but uh, I let my daughter use this space for her uh, online school. And um, I tend to work upstairs in the living room on my laptop and I'm kind of, you know, hunched over looking down and he thinks that's probably causing the, some of the pain in my thoracic region. So uh, I ordered a couple of new monitors. Uh, I do have a um, uh, a laptop docking station that I can convert to use larger monitors, full-size keyboard, and that kind of thing. So I am going to get that set up for me upstairs and so I can raise the monitors up, kind of look at them a little bit more uh, ergonomically and have a, a regular keyboard so I'm not bent over and that kind of thing. So um, and he gave me some ideas for some other exercises. We talked about body composition a little bit. Uh, looks like for the first um, three months, my uh, muscle, or excuse me, my fat to muscle loss ratio was about 2.1 to 1. We want to get that up closer to 3. And um, on a low calorie diet, um, you're going to lose some muscle mass along with the fat loss. And we try to make, we want to have that ratio between uh, above 2, closer to 3. So my goal is to push that. Uh, up towards three, maybe even higher. Um, I, one of my probably only genetic gifts, <laughs> I guess, that I've gotten is uh, I went into this process with much higher muscle mass than most people have. So I had a lot of extra muscle mass above the normal range. And um, I've lost some of that, but I'm still above the normal range of muscle mass. So now I'm really concentrating, moving my exercise from cardio into a lot more strength-based training to really focus on muscle mass. And the more I've read about exercise and post-bariatric life, and even exercise in general, if you haven't had the surgery, um, I'm learning a lot about uh, the effects of exercise and that exercise is really pretty much crap when it comes to weight loss. And uh, that's why I want to do another video on that because I think a lot of people are pushing their exercise way too hard, especially cardio. That's actually fighting against them in many respects, especially while you're on a low calorie diet. Uh, our focus right now during this first year really should be on strength training to, and it doesn't have to be super intense, doesn't have to be five days a week, it could just be two or three days a week of uh, strength training your major, major muscle groups so that you maintain a decent um, fat loss to muscle ratio. So that's what he suggested I do, that's what I'm doing, and uh, based on a whole lot of research that I've read recently, um, uh, that's what we should all be doing, is a lot more strength training, less um, excessive cardio, and I'll get into that in a future video a little bit more. So all in all, the three month visit, not too bad. I was pretty happy with everything, uh, everything that they said to me, everything that suggested. There was great support. Uh, Legacy uh, Weight Loss and Diabetes uh, Institute has been phenomenal. It's in Portland, Oregon. Um, the support has been great. Uh, I've been, been attending some online um, Zoom uh, support groups and those have been great. Uh, the people I've met, the other patients, and everyone going through this have been incredibly supportive. It's been fantastic, so I can't um, rec recommend them highly enough. 
Uh, they've been really, really, really good. So that's where things are today. Again, um, uh, I'm sorry about the lack of videos. Just crazy work stuff has been going on. Uh, not bad, but just big projects, uh, deadlines, lots of preparation for a lot of major things that are going on at my work. Um, I do project management on a couple of uh, fairly major projects, so um, it's been taking up a lot of time and not giving me a lot of time for videos. But things are kind of evening out and I've kind of readjusted to the change of pace, so I will have another video out here soon on calories and uh, following that up shortly with one on exercise and then the one I've been preparing them a, a lot for and doing a lot of in-depth study for is the microbiome. Well I do a lot of study for all of these things when I talk about calories, exercise. I, I, I don't want to base this all on personal opinion. I want science and facts behind what I tell you guys and Obviously, I'm going to mix in my personal experience in this journey with it, but I really am focused on finding the research and the science that supports what I'm doing to maximize my success and hopefully maximize your success. And again, I hope you're doing really, really well. And uh, any questions you might have, comment below, send me a message, uh, find me on Instagram or other social media. You can search for my name and you'll probably find me. So until next time, take care.